going to be exploring the unfamiliar in the context of the familiar, both in wine and in song. We're going to start with something that was probably very familiar to you, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, when I was first learning about wine, I thought of this as almost an archetypal wine, uh, where I always knew what to expect. The uh, production of this wine in New Zealand is remarkably consistent. You're always usually going to find uh, ruby red grapefruit, tropical fruits, a grassy quality, and a zingy acidity. I've sold many bottles of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc that I've never tasted with that description, and usually I'm right. So uh, that's a good benchmark description to work off of, but today we're doing the unfamiliar. So I bring you a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough of a very different stripe. So this is the Orbis Motorandi Petillon Natural. 2019. Already you can tell we're dealing with something a little different. Uh, it has the color more of limoncello than a regular white wine, uh, and it also has a bottle cap instead of the screw cap we would normally expect from New Zealand. Uh, that's the interesting part. This indicates that there's bubbles in here, and lo and behold there are. It says it in the title of the wine, it's a Petillon Natural. All the kids are calling it Pet Nat these days. Um, you can too. And it basically means that there are bubbles here, but it's done in a different method than, say, champagne. Um, I think of Petillon Natural as kind of like Vegas, like what happens in the bottle stays in the bottle. In champagne, the secondary fermentation that gives the wine the bubbles happens in the bottle, and then they disgorge the yeast cells, sediment, and things like that, so that you just are left with a clear wine, and then they put the cork in. Here, the wine only undergoes one fermentation. Uh, they put the cap on it, and the bubbles form, the yeast and everything else is left there. So I'm kind of excited to show you all of this. It's been sitting uh, calmly so that I can turn it upside down and show you all of this yummy, yeasty goodness on the end of the bottle. Cool, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna shake it up, which I would never do if we were at a restaurant or I were serving this bottle because I'm asking for trouble before we open it up. So this is going to be a wine with a lot of particulate matter inside on top of being cloudy. And here we have it. Well, <laughs> that's why I said not to do it. <laughs> Edit. <laughs> So where were we? <laughs> I'm staying at my best friend's house in Atlanta, Georgia right now because of the situation in New York and uh, she doesn't know that I'm spilling things all over her guest room so don't tell her. <laughs> so here we have the wine. In the glass it's as cloudy as it was in the bottle. Ooh, okay, I'm fired again. Huh. It's got a tropicality that I'd expect, but also a richness because it's been sitting on the lees or the yeast cells for so long that it has a softness and a broadness. It almost reminds me of like a blue moon a beer or something like that. So, uh, wow, I've never had a Sauvignon Blanc like it. So that leads us to music. Where do we go from here? So these two next artists, I'm really excited to, uh, for you to explore the music. The first one is Peggy Lee. Now here's somebody who we think we know from Fever and all of her hit songs. She has a certain style uh, that you can always expect and a certain signature a vibe that I think we could all identify. In a recording called Mirrors, she kind of does something totally different. They're all Lieber and Stoller songs. This one is called Longing for a Simpler Time. It is anything but simple, and I think it will give you a, a fresh perspective on Peggy Lee uh, as a singer of a great deal of intelligence and um, uh, strangeness. <laughs> the next artist is Jeannie Lee. I don't know why both of these singers have Lee as their last name. I know I have Lee as a middle name. It's pure coincidence. Uh, Jeannie Lee and Ren Blake uh, on piano. Both of them are a little more avant-garde and lesser known. In the selection I've chosen for you, they're singing a song that we all know and love. Or if you don't know it right away, the melody uh, will lend itself to knowing why it's a standard. It's called Laura. And I've heard this song many times over the years. I've never been drawn to sing it. Her rendition uh, takes it into a whole new universe. It's very evocative and very eerie, and I'll stop there. So I hope you have a glass of something a little strange and enjoy these next two songs. I'll see you back here for our second wine and more music. 